one by Golda Meir shall lead all, lo, it shall lead all the rest. After the, after the, the war, in 1973, Yom Kippur War, she said, I can forgive the Egyptians for killing our soldiers, but I will never forgive them for making us kill theirs. No, 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 Michael. That beats even anything that you have said so far. <laughs> Though I must tell you that I have great faith in you. You're still growing. What an inane, what an obscene statement that is. I will never forgive them for killing our boys. And God bless every Jew who prevented the Egyptians from killing Jews by killing them. And that is a Jewish concept. <laughs> My oldest son was in Lebanon. Artillery. He, when he came back, he told me a thing which I already knew. But he had seen it personally. They were given orders that if PLO physicians were inside villages, they were not allowed to give fire cover to the infantry lest they kill civilians. Do you know how many Jewish soldiers died because of that criminal order when they had to go in under sniper fire? In every normal war, you level, you level the area, artillery, and then the soldiers go in. But we didn't do that. I tell you that all the Arabs in Lebanon were not worth the life of one Jewish soldier. And when my son serves in an army, I want to know that his CO cares more about him than about some Arabs who are part of a nation which thrills and waits for that day of Idbaq al yahud of slaughtering the Jew. In World War II, did Allied bombers ever say, well, maybe we shouldn't bomb the cities because there were civilians there? Who do you think we killed when we bombed Berlin? Gestapo generals? We were fighting an entire nation which was committed to plunging the world into eternal darkness. You know what father's learning? Let me psychoanalyze, not learner as Michael Lerner, but all of them, both here and there. They're rid of the guilt. They believe that maybe we really have no right to go to the country at all and take it from the Palestinians that were there. But because they not only are guilt-ridden, but they're also cowards, because if you really believe that you're a thief, you give back your kibbutz. If you really have guilt feelings about it, what am I doing here after all? In 1880, there were Arabs in, of course there were Jews also, but mostly Arabs. What am I doing here? If you really feel that way, give back your kibbutz. But they don't have the courage to do that either. That cowards in their throats, so they have to sit and they wallow in their guilt and they have to take the Arab position on every single issue in order to win a crumb of forgiveness for their conscience. That's the point. Well, I have no guilt. That land belongs to us. And when I heard Shamir say, we need greater Israel because of the Russian Jews, what an outrageously stupid statement. The reason why, that, why we should not give up that land. Not because we need it for Russian Jews. If it isn't ours, it doesn't belong to us. There's only one reason why we should keep that land, and it is because it belongs to us. <laughs> you annex the territories, and you make them as Israel as is Tel Aviv. 
and you remove the errors. You give them a choice. If errors wish to stay, fine, but they live as this, as the concept as the concept of Gilfushan, a resident stranger. That is the halachic concept. He may live there with his personal rights, but no national rights. He is not a citizen. who finally learned one one biblical verse said, but it says that thou shalt treat the stranger from that's true, but he remains a stranger and not a citizen. and decently, but he's a stranger, he's not a citizen. If they accept it, let them stay, sit quiet. If not, out, out. Where will they go? Where will they go? Where will they go? They'll go to Lebanon and they'll go to Jordan. Don't insult my intelligence later by by asking, but what if Jordan doesn't want them? Of course Jordan doesn't want them. But I don't want them either. So they'll have them. And if they want to call Jordan Palestine, you want to call Palestine, you want to call Oakland, you want to call Oakland. What am I going to call Colin? I don't care. What do I owe Colin? Nothing. 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 Jordan is, first of all, legally Jordan is not Palestine. Legally Jordan isn't even Jordan. Jordan is all of 68 years old. When the League of Nations gave the British a mandate to create a Jewish state, it was over both sides of the Jordan. The British cut away, as the British do. They cut away the East Bank because they were missing one state for one for one king, the grandfather of this present midget. <laughs> and they created Transjordan, which later turned into Jordan. This is the legal step. If the Arabs think that they are Palestinians, if they you want to be Palestinians, <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna call Jordan Palestine, call Palestine. Not that I, I recognize it, but he's gonna call it like a shot. But not in any part of the land of Israel that we now now hold. It's insanity. The Arabs start four wars with us, kill fifteen thousand soldiers in those wars, and then suddenly realize we can't beat them that way. Let's do it differently. And they say, okay. Let's have peace. Let's start. Let's go back to go. <laughs> I come from Brooklyn. Streets. The streets. In Brooklyn, win is win, and loses, lose. <laughs> and especially losers who start a war and lose it, they lose good. I believe in land for peace. I always have, for years, always. We'll keep the land, we'll give them peace. <laughs> and if they wish the Palestine stay, we may even help you overthrow the little one, Jose. Let the Arabs But let them know, but let them know, but let them know that if they should be so foolish as to got to start another war, and we conquer that, that belongs to us too. But what will the world say? But what will the world say? I tell you, what will the world In 1945, the Poles and the Czechs expelled 12 million ethnic Germans from their countries. Dateland and Silesia and Danzig, 12 million people who have lived in those countries for a thousand years. Do you know why? Do you know what they did to bring on Hitler in the 1930s? It's a fifth column. And so when World War II ended and the Poles and Czechs licked their many, many wounds, they said in their own way, never again, and they threw them out. The Poles 
to say, what, what will America say? What will the world say? Stop telling Polish jokes. They're smarter than we are. <laughs> they threw them out. They gave them 48 hours. Take what, what you can carry and get out. And they got out. He was saying, but what if the Arabs won't get out? <laughs> on the day that they hear on the radio that Khan is prime minister, half of them will be across the border in a day. <laughs> because in the Middle East, the name isn't logic and mercy. The name is strength or weakness. That's what they understand. Not for nothing does most of my support come from Sephardic Jews. Because they're normal. They learned about Arabs because they lived with them, not at some seminar at Berkeley. <laughs> they lived with them and they fled them. That's why they backed me, because I'm normal too. What would the world say? What would the world say? First of all, what do, you, what do you mean the world? I'm a, you know, Talmud scholar. I like logic. What do you mean the world? Togo, Singapore, Khartoum, Ecuador. You don't mean the world, you mean America. See, in 10 seconds, I shot the world. <laughs> what will America say? First of all, what will America say? The trouble with most Jews is that they think that uh, Americans sit all day thinking about nothing except Israel. <laughs> <laughs> Americans sit all day thinking, can Sacramento be that bad a thing? <laughs> How much money will Montana get next year? That's what Americans think about. They couldn't care less about Jews or Arabs. It's only Jews with their pathetic feelings. What, what is the guy thinking about me? He's not. <laughs> Secondly, what in the world makes you think that America backs Israel because it's good? America, of course, only backs good countries. Franco, Spain, Salazar, Portugal, the countries of Greece, Chile, El Salvador. <coughs> countries don't back countries because they're good. They back countries out of self-interest. That's poli sci 1.1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Basic, out, out of there. Back Israel because it's good. If America did not think it is to its interest to back Israel, it would not back Israel, even if Abba Ibn would be Prime Minister God. <laughs> First of all, I don't want economic aid for America. I don't want it. And in our platform, we have had, we will not take economic aid anymore. It doesn't help us. It hurts us. We become some kind of a junkie, an economic junkie, that every year gets its fix. And it prevents us from changing the situation that exists today. Israel today is not a state. It's a shul. <laughs> it runs around with a pushka, a charity box. USA, German, 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 German funds, uh, UJA, you don't build a state like a shul. You build an economy that stands on its own feet, and that can only be done by capitalism, a free enterprise system. That is what has to be done. You cut their their case, the bureaucracy, throw the bureaucrats into the sea. Not the Arabs, just the bureaucrats. <laughs> And then, if you give people a chance to make money, oh, will they make money? Billions will pour into Israel. Private money, private funds, investments. They'll build factories, give us jobs, exports, hard currency. That's what Israel needs, not charity. <laughs> Military aid? That's a different story. If America feels that Israel is not worth it, don't give us the money either, and you won't get the use of the hyphen naval base. <laughs> How much 
is it worth to america